Welcome to B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher along with B News Director Rich Hosford, B News reporters Robert Paris and Chris Flaherty, Peter Brown with the weather and Ian Cassiola with the Community Bulletin Board. Thank you for joining us. School starts next week. And one thing always on the minds of school officials and public safety officers is school security. This year, the school department is working with police to implement a new security protocol with clear language and instructions. B News Director Rich Hosford has more. If there is one thing everyone can agree upon, it's the importance of maintaining safety and security at our schools. This year, the Burlington Public Schools are implementing a new standard response protocol to establish a uniform system for addressing critical incidents and emergencies. The plan is to make everyone at the schools prepared for any incident, weather events, fires, accidents, intruders, and other threats to student safety with clear language and guidelines. Um, it's the same language um, universally across the board with this program so we're not changing anything at the schools instead of calling it like we used to call it code blue and things like that we call it a lockdown so what we like about this program is it's an all hazard program the protocols are the brainchild of John Michael Keyes, founder of the I Love You Guys Foundation. Keyes' daughter Emily was killed in 2006 during the Platte Canyon High School shooting. Her last text message sent to her parents while being held hostage was, I love you guys. The way the protocol works is that everyone in the school will be given the same instructions printed on posters in each room of the building that details what to do when one of four instructions are given. They are lockdown, lockout, evacuate, and shelter. So it's going to have the same language um, throughout. So every classroom, every staff member at the schools will have it. Uh, our custodians will have it. It'll be ready available, uh, posted, and also in emergency flyers all throughout the building. It'll be at the PA system at the schools, whoever's the one that uh, speaks on the PA system. Our front desk will have it. So if we say there's a lockdown at the school, all that means is that there's a threat um, inside the building and teachers can look up and says what to do with the students, what they should do. If it's a lockout, that means there's a threat outside the building. Teachers can look at this flyer and say, okay, lockout, threat outside the building, let me see. Uh, students, uh, school as, as usual. So they know they're not going to lose any school time. If it's uh, evacuate, that could be a fire, it could be a hazmat problem in the school. They're told to evacuate. We have that pre-planned. So, and then the last one is shelter, a hazard where it might be a, um, it could be like a hurricane or something like that. We want them to shelter down at the school. So all it is is they have one area or one place where they go to. Everything's answered as far as school safety. So if there's a substitute teacher, if there's someone not really sure what's going on, they can look at these flyers. They can hear the PA system. They have to say the, whatever the announcement is a couple times. They can look right on the sheet and they'll know exactly what's going on, what they should do with staff, what they should do with students. And that way, um, we make sure that everybody's thinking the same way and that uh, we think will make the schools as safe as possible. This clear language is a departure from how security was handled before when codes, known only to those in charge, were created. This sometimes led to confusion and a lack of information to both those in the building and parents hearing about a security threat. Codes was thought to be the way to do it if there was a threat inside the building and somebody called out a, a cold silver, then that would mean that everybody knows to protect themselves, uh, but maybe the bad person or the threat doesn't know that, that, that everyone's aware he's there. Um, the, the protocol now um, is that we don't want codes. We want to say right out over loudspeakers, there's a threat, there's a threat for your safety, there's a person with a gun, there's a person with a knife. Um, you know, that immediately just do whatever you need to make yourself safe. There's no more codes. You want everything out in the open because, of course, there could be visitors in the school. There could be some staff that um, might not know what that code is in that particular school. Uh, obviously, for our, our commercial properties in, uh, throughout town, we never would want people to use codes because there's always visitors in those properties. So you're right. It's turned over the last number of years to using codes to just put everything out in the open. Any threat at all, say right over the PA. Tell everybody exactly what you want them to do. Text everybody and say there's a person with a gun, there's a person with a knife or a threat or a hazmat problem. Say it out immediately so everybody knows exactly what to do and that way it really simplifies things. And we always say, you know, minutes count, but really some of these things, seconds count. So we want to get everybody understanding what that threat is and then the plan accordingly after that. School officials say this system will help parents have more information during an emergency by providing them the language of the protocols. I, I, again, I, I think there'll always be anxiety, you know, with these type of situations. So it's, but I think it'll help 
lend itself some clarity. So again, if we say relax code blue, which is something we've used in the past, a term we've used in the past, um, you know, parents will call and say, what does that mean? And then if the answer is I can't really, you know, get into too much detail as to what that means, there can, there can be some um, confusion and some frustration. If, if we have, again, a lockout um, in the new protocol term and we have that defined and we tell parents what a lockout is and some of the situations we would be using it in, I think then they would, again, I, I hope that would um, help, but they're still going to want more information and we're still going to have to provide it. I just think simplicity, clarity, um, directness, I hope, will just improve communication. At the Burlington Police Department and Burlington Public Schools, I'm B News Director Rich Hosford. State Senator Ken Donnelly said this week he plans to return to service for the legislati legislative session that begins in January of 2017. As reported on B News on July 31st, Senator Donnelly was admitted to Mass General Hospital after experiencing physical difficulties during a legislative session. Days later, it was announced that he had undergone surgery to remove a brain tumor and was in recovery. This week, he thanked all the people who reached out to him, his family, and his office uh, to offer support and well wishes during the ordeal. He also said he looks forward to serving the constituents of the district once again and that in the meantime, his staff is always available to help. He said the issues he wants to address the next term include ensuring affordable and accessible high quality health care for all, securing a chance at a living wage, a first class education, and a safe place to live and raise a family, and providing a clean environment for everyone's children and grandchildren. Donnelly's seat is up for election this year, but he does not have either a Democratic challenger in the primary or a Republican uh, challenger in the November general. Two new businesses have opened in the 3rd Avenue mixed-use development project. James Joseph Salon and Extend Barre presently or recently joined the other businesses in the park, which features unique establishments and high-end brands. Extend Barre was originally launched in Florida in 2009 by professional dancer Andrea Rogers. The Extend Barre workout combines the results of dance with the principles of strength and safety in Pilates. Each class features an elegant yet energetic combination of movements that enhance flexibility, improve balance, and challenge the core. The Burlington Studio will be the second to be established in Massachusetts, the first being on Newbury Street in Boston. James Joseph Salon, founded in 1997 on Newbury Street in Boston, has grown to six locations in Massachusetts, including their latest additions in Burlington and Linfield. The stylists are highly trained in today's latest hair trends and pride themselves on continuing to learn how to bring the perfect style to both men and women. The Fox 25 morning news team was on the Burlington Town Common last week to meet with residents and community leaders live on the air. They and attendees also took a few minutes to speak to us about the zip trip. B News reporter Robert Paris has this report. One of Boston's most popular morning news teams was at the Town Common last week. On Friday, August 26, Fox 25 visited Burlington for their final zip trip of the season. Many residents of Burlington attended the gathering. Burlington Town Administrator John Petron shared his thoughts on the zip trip and talked about what will happen in Burlington throughout the month of September. Uh, this is great. Uh, they've been working with my staff, Betty McDonough in particular, you know, to pull this together and to be here today. I'm told when they were here last time in 2007 that it's still their number one attended day, <laughs> Zip Trip. You know, so Burlington is a great spot for them, and we certly show our community spirit uh, here today. Well, first I got to get over the fact summer's over. <laughs> you know, so that's that's a tough one. You know, uh, moving forward. Uh, but right now, uh, I think everybody knows we're in the problem of water, <laughs> so I you know, I can't uh, you know go without asking people they've been great so far so the town's been great with the water restrictions but we got to keep that up you know through September October we really don't have rain in sight and the forecast isn't for that uh, so that's the number one issue uh, number two school starting again so right after Labor Day so let's start watching our safety issues out there kids will be back on the road buses on the road so let's watch those pieces and then we begin the normal procedures of September and September brings the September town meeting so uh, but it's not it's not an exciting one uh, you know we got just regular business I think at the uh, September town meeting and one or two other articles so that'll be towards the end of September uh, we did have to move the uh, town meeting um, uh, two nights to Wednesday night right. so town
town meeting is September 28th this year. On September 26th, Leahy Hospital <clears throat> is going to be showing off their new emergency room, which I think is huge news, you know, for the town. So I think that's a great addition, you know, what's going on. Peter Brown spoke with fellow meteorologist Sherry Spear about her experience with the zip trip in Burlington. Look, I mean, the crowd was awesome. Burlington, thank you so much, because the people that came out were very friendly, very nice, very supportive. The crowd was great. This was, this was, quite, a, this was quite a gathering. And sometimes when it gets a little sticky out there, you don't know if people are going to want to come out and brave the elements. But um, the people were great today, and there were a lot of friendly faces. I think at one point we had three girls that just had their birthday within a week, so it was kind of birthday corner, if you will. So zip trips are neat because I get to do the forecast out here. You saw that I'm doing it all from a laptop, oh, yes. right? Gosh, yes. Yeah, and it's connected to our, our in-studio computers and all my stuff back there. So we kind of take it on the road, uh, and they take my graphics full when I'm on, but I get to do the forecast out here. We interview a lot of local people as well, but the best part is just meeting the people in the towns and cities that we talk about because I feel like sometimes when we do weather that we're talking about it all from a bird's eye perspective. We look at it from a map up here, but it's right. so important to get down to the ground and know what the terrain looks like that you're talking about, the people that you're talking to in those communities. Gene Levanchi, Fox 25 anchor, told B News meteorologist Peter Brown how the zip trip came about. Well, it's our second time here in Burlington. We were out here maybe nine years ago, I think, and um, we've hit so many different cities and towns and changed how we've done zip trips. We wanted to go back and visit the ones that maybe, you know, didn't have the same sort of carnival atmosphere that we have now. So uh, Burlington was one of those towns we want to come back and visit, and everybody's been great, and uh, it's been a wonderful morning so far. Well, I think originally the idea for Zip Trips was to get out in the community, get to meet people, and, and showcase their town. Usually when, when uh, a news truck comes into town, it's you know, bad news, something's gone on that's, you know, criminally uh, connected, or, or something usually, it's not a welcoming thing. So we said, you know, why don't we go out and, and highlight the positive of a, of a town, the people work in the community, the restaurants, its history, and stuff like that. And we did it, started, I think, in 2004. It was one camera, and, you know, two people came out, and now it's grown into this huge thing. So um, it's been really well received. I think people appreciate us coming out and doing some positive stuff about their towns. Even young children were enjoying the festivities. One youngster, Evan, who is Linda McNamee's son, host of BCAT's Something to Talk About, had this to say. Any last words you want to tell the people at home? One more. Yeah. Have a great day. Thanks, Evan. From the Fox 25 Zip Trip, I'm Robert Paris for B News Weekly. It seems hardly a week goes by without a new article posted here concerning a new or returning scam. Whether it's a fake lottery win, an illegitimate job offer, phony products or charities, or even bogus kidnappings, there seems to never be an end to how criminals will try to steal your money or identities. This week, the Federal Trade Commission put out a press release with the top 10 ways to avoid being scammed. Here are the top three tips. Hang up on robocalls. If you pick up the phone and hear a recorded sales pitch, hang up and report it to the FTC. These calls are illegal and plentiful. Don't press one or two or any number to get off the list to speak to a person. That just, just means you'll get more calls. Don't trust your caller ID. Scammers can make caller ID look like anyone is calling. The IRS, a business or government office, even your own phone number. If they tell you to pay money for any reason or ask for your financial account numbers, hang up. If you think the caller might be legitimate, call back to a number you know is genuine, not the number the caller has given you. Talk to someone before you give up money or information. Talk to someone you trust. Scammers want to know, want you to make a decision in a hurry. Slow down, check out the story, search online, or just tell a friend. We find that people who talk to someone, anyone, are much less likely to fall for a scam. You can find the full list of tips at www.bcattv.org forward slash bnews. Veteran Services is expanding its programming for the veterans of the Burlington community. This Thursday, they hosted a special brunch at Grandview Farm. BNews reporter Chris Flaherty was in attendance and he files this report. This Thursday, Veteran Services held a special brunch at Grandview Farm for all veterans registered in the town of Burlington. This was the second event put together by Veteran Services this year, the first taking place back in June. Food was donated by Tuscan Kitchen and True North. Chris Hannafin, Director of Veteran Services, spoke on how through events like this, the hope is to gain a stronger sense of the veteran community 
here in Burlington? You know, I only know a select number of veterans through the census here in town of how many veterans are actually in town. Uh, by offering things like this, veterans get the word elsewhere uh, to other veterans in the community that may not be a part of or may not be signed up in the census as veterans. It provides an opportunity for veterans to to come meet Jen and I personally if they haven't done so. It's, it's also, you know, a sense of camaraderie uh, as veterans. Uh, while you're in the military, you know, the eight years that I was in the Marine Corps, I actually shared more meals with my my local Marines or fellow Marines than I did with my family back home. When you get out of the military, you kind of lose that sense. So it provides an opportunity for like-minded individuals that have all served their country to come down, eat a meal at, at Grandview Farm uh, that's free of charge and, you know, share stories uh, and, and also to get to, get to know one, one another. I uh, am going to enjoy the brunch very much, but the camaraderie is even better. We're talking to all of the veterans here and relating uh, stories of this and that and talking politics because the election's coming up. So I'm enjoying it. Haven't eaten yet, but we will enjoy it. This is the uh, second one I've been to. Uh, I also uh, worked with Tuscan Kitchen to set up the veterans dinner last year uh, in November, and I think we're going to be doing the same thing again this year. This is a broad spe uh, spectrum of people from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and uh, even some of the younger ones here right now from uh, Iraq and so forth. So this is always a nice uh, occasion. Uh, Chris Hannifin does a wonderful job, and Jennifer helps him wonderfully. They're both great people. They're the veterans' offices in town. You can never go wrong with good food and good company. Until next time, this is Chris Flaherty for B News Weekly. Ed Tedesco would also like to remind everyone that the Burlington Disabled Veterans will be having their Forget-Me-Not drive September 8th through the 10th. They'll be giving out poppy flowers at various locations throughout the town, and they would appreciate anything that you might be able to give. The town of Burlington will hold a special remembrance ceremony for the victims of the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks in New York and Washington. Uh, that will mark the 15th anniversary this year. The ceremony will be held on Sunday, September 11, from 9 to 11 a.m. on the Town Common. The event notice states that this year's ceremony will honor and remember not only the innocent people killed that day, but also the brave first responders who died serving then and those that serve now. It will also honor the men and women who served in the nation's military and have died or been wounded protecting the country, including local Marine Gregory McDonald, who died in Iraq. This year, the organizers are working with the Burlington High School students to conduct a 9 by 12 foot United States flag made out of more than 1,500 small red and white blue flags. Each of, the flag, each of the white flags bear the name of a firefighter or police officer who died at the World Trade Center and the military personnel who died at the Pentagon. The ceremony will also include a woman's choir and a firefighter's bagpipe band, among other things. There will also be dis a display of police and fire vehicles and equipment for the public to use. This year, anyone driving down Mall Road will have noticed a lot of construction in the district. New restaurants, office buildings, a hotel, and upgraded landscaping are currently in the works. B News reporter Robert Paris recently went to the park to get some shots of the work in progress and has this montage. Let's have a look. We go now to B News meteorologist Peter Brown in our weather center for this week's forecast. We'll also check out the community calendar with Ian Cassiola to see what's happening in town. Well, hello everyone. This is Peter Brown with a look at your, if you can believe it, Labor Day forecast coming up in this next period. As you can see here, we're going to start off September, which is the 
First day, September 1st, is the first day of meteorological fall. So unfortunately, summer is really drawing to an end now. So we are just about at the end of it. As you can see, we're going to start off the pier with temperatures about average in the upper 70s. And very pleasant lows, lows in the, in the mid and upper 50s. You'll actually notice as we start to get in September, our temperatures at night will get much more comfortable. Still stay nice and warm during the day, but cooling off at night so you don't have to keep the air conditioning on anymore. And look at this over here at the length of day. The length of day is now only about 13 hours long. So if you can believe it, that's actually a loss of about two hours since um, the middle of June. So that's quite telling that fall is definitely on its way. As we move ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit about the weather that's going to be coming for the next period. And this is going to be a little bit interesting to watch when we get, unfortunately, around to late Sunday and into maybe Labor Day. Um, many of you have probably been hearing about this large tropical depression in the Gulf of Mexico that's going to be affecting Florida in the next couple of days. That, every time um, a new model run has been coming out, once that storm gets up near us here in the northeastern part of the country, it's been trending further west, which means closer to us. So this is something we might have to watch going into Labor Day. But the good thing about that is it looks like it's p potential that we could have some very beneficial rain in some of our hardest hit drought areas, which are right here in the Burlington area. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed on this, and hopefully the models will stay correct, and maybe we can get a little bit of that tropical moisture up here to help us with the drought. But as we move ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit about the fallout look for temperatures and precipitation. Right here, this is the look at the precipitation from the Climate Prediction Center. As you can see, up here in New England, up here in our Burlington area, it doesn't look like we're going to be abnormally dry, but it also unfortunately doesn't look like we're going to be too wet either going into the fall. And we really desperately need some rain going into the fall. So hopefully this outlook changes and we get some beneficial rains to come in. But as we go ahead and look at the temperatures, there's really going to be no surprise there. Look at this. Coast to coast, warmer than average, especially up here in New England, up here around Burlington. They're expecting our fall temperatures to be well above average going all the way into almost December. So looks like the warm times aren't leaving us anytime soon. And as we move ahead to the seven-day forecast, that will actually be reflected right here. Look at this. We have introduced a chance of some showers Thursday and Friday. And again, Saturday looks like it's going to be the pick of the weekend. And we may have a little bit from that tropical disturbance coming up here Sunday into Monday. But look at this. Temperatures are going to be actually fairly pleasant. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. But guess what, folks? As we get towards the end of the period, getting into next Wednesday and next Thursday, it looks like the heat is going to be back here. We may see temperatures, look at this, up into the mid 80s to near 90 again. So summer might be ending on the calendar, but weather-wise, it certainly isn't. So I hope you all get out there and have a wonderful Labor Day and have a great weekend ahead. Hello and welcome to your community calendar. First up, parents, are your children interested in the wonders of science? On Saturday, September 10th at 11 a.m., the Barnes & Noble in Burlington is hosting a storytime event called Add a Twist Scientist by Andrea Beatty. The book features builder Iggy, inventor Rosie, and a scientist Ada who has boundless imagination and has always been hopelessly curious. When her house fills with a horrific toe-curling smell, Ada knows it's up to her to find the source. Not afraid of failure, Ada embarks on a fact-finding mission and conducts scientific experiments, all in the name of discovery but this time her experiments lead to even more stink and get her into trouble. Everyone is welcomed. The event is free. For more info, visit the Barnes & Noble website at barnesandnoble.com or call 781-273-3871. Grandparents' Day is right around the corner. On Sunday, September 11th from 1 to 3 p.m., the Barnes & Noble in Burlington is hosting a Grandparents' Day interactive story time. The interactive story time will be featuring Jane Sutton's book, What's Up With This Chicken? and Ellen Meyer's Cake Day. Everyone is welcomed along with parents, grown children, and of course, grandparents. The event is also free. For more info, visit the Barnes & Noble website at barnesandnoble.com or call 781-273-3871. Finally, are you looking to buy used items at a low price? On Saturday, September 10th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., the United Church of Christ on 6 Lexington Street will be having a family flea market. Furniture, jewelry, toys, books, sporting goods, and other household items will be on sale. The proceeds will support church programs. Everyone is welcomed and the event is free. In the event of rain, the sale will be held in the church hall. For more info, visit uccburlington.org or call 781-272-4547. This has been your community calendar. I'm Ian Cassiola. Back to you in the studio. 
We remind you that the Mass State primary is set for Thursday, September 8th, and anyone who wants to vote but can't make it to the polls can pick up an absentee ballot. The Burlington County Clerk's Office has absentee ballots for those who will be out of town, can't get, get to the polls due to a physical disability, or have a religious commitment on Election Day. Absentee ballots are available in the Clerk's Office and will be mailed to those who have applied. Voters may apply and vote in the office. The deadline to apply is noon on Wednesday, September 7th. Voters may apply and vote in person at the town clerk's office or through the mail. Applications are also available at uh, www.burlington.org by clicking the link on the front page. Hospitalized voters must have been admitted after noon of the fifth day before the election. They must apply themselves and designate in writing who may hand carry the ballot to them. Applications can be made anytime, however, the ballot must be returned by the close of the poll. The state primary polls will be at Burlington High School as usual, and voting will uh, run from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. This Monday is Labor Day, and all town, state, and federal offices will be closed in, observ ob uh, in observance of the holiday. This includes town hall, the post office, the Burlington Public Library, and all public schools. Restaurants will mostly be open, as will many retail locations. Liquor stores will be open at the owner's discretion. Most convenience stores and gas stations will be open as well. Those having end of summer gatherings should remember the areas in the midst of a severe drought. All precautions should be taken with any outdoor cooking and campfires should be avoided. That's it from the news desk here at B News Weekly. I'm Phil Gallagher along with B News Director Rich Hosford, B News reporters Chris Flaherty and Robert Paris, Peter Brown with the weather, and Ian Cassiola with the community calendar. Thank you for joining us.